laying in the open hymn, hymn number 465. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Christ being raised from the dead, he will never die again. Yes, the Lord has dominion over him. Christ has risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. So let us confess our sins to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
maker of all things, judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are by nature sinful, and we have... done the evil you forbid, and have not done the good you demand. We do repent. Forgive us all that is past, blot out all our sins, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, direct lives so that we Grant us steadfastness among all the changes of this world, and build your kingdom among us here through Jesus Christ our Lord. God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and turn to him. May he keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit, <coughs> excuse me, and grant you a victorious life on earth, and finally a triumphant life with him in heaven forever. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As well-loved Easter people, rejoice and be glad, for you are free indeed. Amen. In your presence there is fullness of joy, that your right hand are pleasures forevermore. O oh Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. Sing praises to the Lord, O oh, you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So let us pray. O living Lord, you have commanded us to preach repentance and forgiveness of sins to all nations. To fulfill this command, we ask you to clothe us with the power from on high, your Holy Spirit, that we may carry the amazing message of your resurrection to the ends of the earth. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading then for this third Sunday after Easter, it comes to us from the book of Acts, the third chapter. While the lame man who had now been healed, he clung to Peter and John and all the people they ran together to them. And the portico called Solomon's Astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, he said, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety that we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you, you denied the holy and righteous one, and ask for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man the perfect health in the presence of you all. 
And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. So repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed to you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive, until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophet long ago. This is the word of the Lord. We'll speak in response to the words of the gradual. Christ has risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. The epistle then comes to us from the first letter of St. John, the third chapter. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness, for sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning, and no one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Well, hallelujah. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. For death no longer has dominion over him. We stand then for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about all these things, Jesus himself stood among them and he said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and they were frightened and they thought that they seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why? Why are you troubled? And why do you doubt arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still disbelieving, for joy and were marveled. He said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and he ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to the understanding of the Scripture. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning right here from Jerusalem. For you are witnesses of all these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power that is from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated.
Jordan, come on up. All right. Well, good morning. How are you? Good. Wouldn't you just want to have it? I mean, don't you want to be famous? Don't you want to have people follow you everywhere? They could be creepy, right? Having people look at you all the time. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want that, though? Why wouldn't you want success and fame and fortune and popularity? Huh? Why wouldn't you want to be popular? Why wouldn't you like it? Because, uh, I mean, it would be great to have all these people follow me wherever I went. But then, if you want to play by yourself, they'll still follow you. Yeah. Like, you know, you to so you wouldn't have any time for yourself. Well, you see, Peter and John, they were disciples of our Lord, right? They were apostles. And they performed a great miracle in the name of Jesus. According to our text, the narrative before our reading for today and the narrative or story, if you will, afterwards, right? They performed a great miracle, and oh, the people came running. It was great. This man who was crippled from birth, right? He jumped up for joy. He could walk. Peter and James, or John, I should say, healed Jesus. They healed this man in Jesus' name. Okay? They didn't take credit for it. But yet all these people, they wanted to follow him. They thought it was great. They thought it was awesome. Like a new movie. Like a new movie. So they were popular. Today we're going to talk about that even though that miracle was above all other miracles, right? It was better than anything that anybody had ever seen. Now they see the risen Lord, right? A miracle greater than any other miracle. But there is one miracle that's even greater than that. And we're going to talk about that during our sermon today. So it's okay that you're not popular. It's okay that I'm not popular, right? It's okay. I don't want to be popular either. Because then every, every, everybody's watching and staring at you and following you. And not blinking their eyes, exactly. All right, so will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being with me. Help me to know that you love me. And that you died for my sin. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so thank God that you're not popular, all right? All right. You go, buddy. You're welcome. You're welcome.
sing today with one accord. It's even more amazing than any miracle that you can imagine. Our text then for this third Sunday after Easter is from the book of Acts, which we just read a few moments ago, and it'll serve as the basis for this morning's meditation. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, fame and fortune and popularity. They're all good things. But miracles, miracles sure attract crowds. After all, Peter and John, they just healed a lame man in the temple. And you know what? Wow! Everybody came running. And who wouldn't? I would. And I'm sure that you would. An amazing miracle had just happened. A crippled man was healed. It was so impressive to see. But in Peter's sermon that followed this healing, we find another amazing thing that took place, which is actually even more amazing than the miracle itself. God offers something that the world cannot offer. God offered the forgiveness of sins to those who had killed Jesus. What? Yes. <coughs> it's unbelievable. But truth be told, it is more amazing than a miracle. God, in all of his mercy and in his love, he offers forgiveness to all. Now think about that for a moment. God offers forgiveness to all. Who is Jesus? He was, or better is, God himself in the flesh, who became true man in order to save the world. And in his ministry... We ask the question, what did he do? Jesus came to this earth to help people. He healed their diseases. He cast out their demons. He raised their dead. And he forgave their sins. Especially the sins of, well, tax collectors and sinners like the apostles. Did Jesus do anything to deserve death? we got to be honest and answer no, not at all. Even Pontius Pilate knew that he was innocent and planned to release him. So what happens? The leaders were jealous, and they resented Jesus. They didn't care for his rebukes. They didn't care for his message. Jesus called them on their pride and their hypocrisy. Yet, they hated Jesus. They thought that he was a menace to the way of life, to their position, to their power in this world. So they decided that, well, he's got to go. And the people, well... On Palm Sunday, they hailed Jesus as a hero. But just a few days later, they were screaming out in a loud voice, Crucify him! They chose Barabbas, who was a murderer and a resurrectionist. They wanted anybody but Jesus. They wanted him dead, as it were. And we know on Good Friday that's what they got. 
In short, Peter told them, you killed the author of life. Can you imagine if you were there? Those would be hard words to hear. I can't imagine a worse sin. Even Adam and Eve choosing a piece of fruit at the price of death does not seem so bad as crucifying the Son of God. So if anybody deserved hell, it was these very people whom Peter was talking about. But instead of delivering God's curse, what does Peter do? What does he say? Repent therefore, he says, and turn back, that your sin may be blotted out, wiped out, as it were, erased, gone for good. That's forgiveness. Gone for good. We can't help it but rejoice. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. You see, here's the thing that our text points out to each and to every one of us. God grants forgiveness to all people for their sin. The kind of God that he is, is gracious and merciful. For when Adam and Eve sinned first and then all the rest of us would follow right along, God acted to save. His mercy and love were greater than the sin of Peter's hearers, even the sin of killing the Son of Man. And his mercy and his love are greater than our sin. Not only did he promise, starting with Adam and Eve, that he would save people from their sin, but he also kept his promise and sent his son, who did die. And yes, on the third day he rose. Jesus was the great sin bearer and the great death dyer, if you will. But when he rose from the dead, it was finished. He had won. Not sin, not death, not the devil, not anything would overcome it. Jesus had won. Sin, all sin had been blotted out, and that's what Peter was offering, even to those who killed Jesus, the very worst of sin. Conquered and wiped clean in the resurrection of our Lord. So here's the thing. Christ is risen. Sometimes you and I, we feel that maybe sometimes our sin is, well, too big to forgive. There are many of us here, maybe all of us, who have a sin too big to forget. Perhaps it's something really embarrassing or something really scandalous that nobody knows about except us. And the problem is we can't forget. Or maybe it's a reoccurring sin that we can't get over. We do it again and again and again. Sins like these can trouble us. They can haunt us. They can refuse to leave us alone. But they leave us wondering, does God really care? Does God really forgive me of my sin? And the good news for us today is Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The answer is yes. God forgives us of our sins. God forgives all sin. That's the answer that our text puts forward. There is no sin, no sin too big to forgive, even if we forget it. You see, God forgave David, the adulterer and the murderer. He forgave Paul, who persecuted all Christians. He even forgave Peter, who denied him not once, not twice, but three times. And it was that very same Peter who held out forgiveness in times of refreshing from God, who would send Jesus back and restore all things to these very people, who had killed the author of life. 
Yes, they killed him. But Jesus didn't stay dead forever. Christ is risen. He is risen My dear friends in Christ, Easter. Easter is the answer to our problems and for our sin. Yours and mine and all the world's. And we know if you watch the news, there's a lot of it. The whole world is full of sin and history is this record. But there is something greater than sin. And it's a part of history too. For God Almighty and His gracious love for us has entered our world in the person of His Son to redeem us to die and to rise again, and to blot out all of our sins. That is the message for today. Christ is risen. risen And that, my friends, is truly amazing. Know that the Lord loves you and cares for you. So what more is there to say but then amen? So say it. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand and together we will sing We All Believe in One True God, hymn number 953. At this time, we will gather our offerings and our tithings and present them to the Lord. You may be seated. We stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole world and the church of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Lord God, in your presence we find the fullness of joy that you forgive us of our sins. 
You win and deliver peace as we pray for the world. And we ask, O Lord, that you would promote peace among the nations. Give to us peace in the knowledge of your salvation and a confident hope in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. O Heavenly Father, by your incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children. So gather us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching here of your holy word. Grant us message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins for the world to hear. Lord, in your mercy. Give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrection. Let us forgive one another and let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives and parents and children. Assure those who live alone that they too are loved by you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, preserve this great nation of ours. Preserve order and decency in this fallen world. That we may practice righteousness while waiting the eternal peace promised by Christ. Lord, in your mercy, you are the God of all comfort. And we ask that you would have compassion on those who are in need, those who are afflicted, those who are sick, those who are frail, those who may be near death. As we lift it before you and we ask, O oh Lord, that you would grant healing to your servants as we pray for Kim and for Marilyn and for Lynn and for Stanley and for Pat and for Darren. Also be with the family of Beverly Barch and Tamara Lins. Grant healing and comfort to your people, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by your son's crucifixion all sin have been blotted out. Send us now the blessed refreshment of his bodily presence in the sacrament of this altar and make us fit partakers in repentance for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all, all for whom we pray this day, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We continue then with our next hymn. <clears throat> Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. 
Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now, may the Lord may he strengthen and preserve you until life everlasting. Part and in peace. of Christ, given for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now may the Lord, may he strengthen me, preserve each and every one of you until life everlasting. Depart in peace with the greatest miracle of all, your sins are indeed forgiven. So go and know that Christ is risen. Heart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Slide down a little bit to get more people through. Welcome to the Lord's table. May the Lord bless, keep, and protect you always. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ. May the Lord bless and keep you always, buddy. May the Lord bless and keep you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ. Given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat the body of Christ. Given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. The body of Christ given for you. For the forgiveness of all your sins. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. The body of Christ given for you. For the forgiveness of all your sins. May the Lord bless keep and protect you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ. May the Lord bless and keep you always. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. My prayers are with you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. What a forgiveness. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ. Give me prayer.
And now may the Lord, may he strengthen, and may he preserve each and every one of you until life everlasting. Depart in peace with the joy in your heart and the twinkle in your eye, knowing that the Lord is risen. Therefore, your sins are indeed forgiven. With that said, please stand. Let us pray. Grant that your son's body and blood, O Lord, which you have given to us to eat and to drink, may abide in us. And let no stain of sin remain in us, whom this pure and holy sacrament has refreshed us through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive then his eternal blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated then as we close in with our hymn, The Joyful Easter Tide, hymn number 482. Good morning and welcome. Christ is risen. The joys of knowing Jesus. Um, just a couple announcements here, just a reminder. We have a lot going on this week. Monday at 6.30 we have Board of Christian Education. We also have Board of Evangelism at 6.30 on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, Board of Trustees. And then, of course, Council is Thursday at 7 p.m., Next Sunday, we have our voters meeting following our service, so please plan on attending for that. Um, as you know, we submitted names now of the congregation for approval. 
So hopefully soon they will get us out a call list of uh, potential pastors for the congregation here. Just a reminder today, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have uh, the fire department pancake breakfast from 9 until 1. So I'll stop by there and have a pancake to and uh, show our support for them. We also have a private baptism coming up here on Saturday, April 27th, so please um, continue for the success here at St. John's. Any other announcements? We're Easter people, right? We shouldn't be quiet, right? We should be loud. Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to be back with you as I spent a couple days with my family, so thank you for that. Um, any other announcements? All right. Well, go in peace and may you have a blessed week, and I will greet your folks in the back. <laughs>